Okay, everyone, we'll start shortly and um, Amadou will introduce us shortly. Amadou, whenever you're ready, I think you can go ahead. Yes, 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 I'm ready. So uh, good morning uh, to uh, all uh, our participants for uh, this morning uh, meeting. I would like to thank you first to, for accepting to participate to this uh, online meeting on dot uh, uh, post. Uh, I would like also to acknowledge the presence of all our members from government, regulatory authorities, designated operators, and uh, restricted unions. We have also with us uh, the UPU field expert in Africa. They just uh, we just appointed them and we invite them to to start. Uh, this will be uh, their first activities uh, with us. Uh, UPU the post webinar series is uh, back, as you, you see. Today's edition will focus on uh, the digital transformation on post in Africa and uh, the ways to facilitate in, it in line with the highest standards of information and data security. The topic of uh, today's uh, meeting is uh, post and African post enabling your digital transformation journey safely and securely. I have with me uh, this morning, uh, my colleague Tracy, who will uh, make a presentation. And after that, you will be able to ask any, any questions uh, for you to understand uh, what is happening uh, behind a uh, dot post. So without any protocol, uh, Tracy, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Amadou, for that very warm welcome. And thank you very much for organizing today's session. I um, really appreciate the opportunity to present to um, all of you in the African um, region. Um, really fantastic opportunity here to showcase the dot .post um, platform and what it can do for you. Uh, my name is Tracy Hackshaw. I am the, the dot .post projects manager. Uh, I'm speaking, speak some friends sometimes, so chef de projet. Um, dot post and um, along with me today will uh, be me Sam Sebra from the dot post team. She is the dot post projects assistant, assistant the projet dot post, and she will also be um, presenting actually um, later on in the presentation. Um, also in today's um, session, we will have a, a short intervention from one of our dot post group associate members, Geo Main and I will indicate when they will come in and give you a short um, introduction to, to what they do and how they potentially can assist the African posts um, within dot .post, um, utilizing the dot .post platform and, and their solution. And they've recently joined the dot .post group as an associate member, so we want to welcome them as well. Um, let me um, first begin to share my screen and confirm that everyone can see it when I do that. In the meantime, maybe what I could ask you to do is as you've been doing so far, perhaps you can use the chat box to everyone and introduce yourselves in the chat, say who you are, where you're from, or post you're from. And um, in terms of questions, my suggestion would be that we would use the Q&A box, but we also feel questions within the chat um, as we see um, these questions arise. All right, so I'm about to share my screen and I'm just going to confirm that you are seeing my screen. Um, so if you cannot see my screen, let us know. I'm assuming you can and I'm not seeing anybody saying they can't see it. So I'm gonna proceed. Yes, we, yes, we can see you as well. Thank you very much. All right, so as I said, um, my name is Tracy Hackshaw, Chef de Project Post. I'll be handling the first part of today's presentation. And as Amadou said, we are looking at uh, how we can enable you as African Posts, um, your, your digital transformation journey, how we can enable that safely and securely. Because as you may be aware, within the Dot .post uh, team, we are um, focused not just on the digital aspects, but also on the cybersecurity aspects. We want to ensure that whatever you do in terms of digital services are done very safely and extremely securely. 
So that's one of our focus uh, points and uh, you'll be seeing that today in our slide, um, slide deck. All right, so we'll start with a short video. So what is dot .post? Some of you may have seen this before, but um, I just wish to bear with us. It's about two minutes. Just give you a brief introduction to what dot .post is um, with a short video. So I'm going to play this video now and I'm going to assume you can all hear. So stand by. Welcome to Dot Post, a unique internet space managed by the Universal Post. Welcome to Dot Post, a unique internet space managed by the Universal Postal Union, benefiting its members and the whole postal community. A safe space on the internet dedicated exclusively to postal services, where security is maintained 24 hours a day. Each member of the Dot Post community can offer their postal services with confidence. A unique, innovative, integrated and boundless space in constant expansion. There are already over 50 members in the Dot Post group taking on the challenge to successfully facilitate cohesive digital strategies globally. Security standards adopted for dot .post prevent redirection to unintended and fraudulent sites. Phishing attacks, malware, botnet and spam are monitored under dot .post, complying with incident management procedures. Members can establish secure email solutions under dot .post as well. Dot .post is a digital gateway to new business possibilities. Posts can extend or transform their traditional services. By using dot .post, they can improve their visibility, enhancing brand recognition on the internet. Dot .post is a safe and reliable online market space for buyers and sellers. Through dot .post, members can provide value-added postal services in the cloud and offer secure digital solutions, including e-commerce. Posts have already established a secure online sales channel for stamps and philately products. With dot .post, customers can track their shipments worldwide through global track and trace dot .post. The challenge for the dot .post group is now to continue facilitating a cohesive digital transformation for dot .post members worldwide, increasing its membership, services and value for money. In dot .post, every member can design and implement innovative digital solutions in products and services to facilitate customer integration and inclusion, bridging the digital divide. To achieve this, the dot .post group has prepared a strategy to fully support members during their journey. Join the dot .post group now and be part of the change. So I was hopeful that you all have seen that and heard that. And um, just a quick introduction as to what we, we are about. So let's go further into some of what was said. Um, we have four key strategic pillars, um, which we also call our goals. As you can see on the slide, I don't necessarily want to read them out, but they really focus on you know, driving digital transformation. So the, the primary or goal one is to increase the visibility of the post in the digital economy, but also um, along with that is to promote trust in digital postal services. So that's, as I mentioned before, a key aspect of what we attempt to do. Um, as well as overall accelerating digital transformation and innovation. Now to do that, we have um, created a, a dot .post um, framework, uh, which we are rolling out and um, it's a future um, forward framework. So what you're seeing on the slide deck is the, both the current state and the vision and where we want to take this forward. So in terms of the current state, which is in the darker blue, that you're seeing on the slide. Um, as you can perhaps see from the bottom, we are um, looking at our dot post governance and compliance as uh, sort of wrapping our um, security blanket around the entire framework from a policy standpoint. And oh, just on above that on the layer, we have our security infrastructure, which is where we implement um, all the dot post cyber security aspects that we will um, showcase today and, and talk about, including our um, new tool cybertrap.post, which is designed to help with um, compliance with these security measures 
um, within the policies. But what you may not be aware of is that we are also working on a shared services platform, which I think many of you may be most interested in. So in that shared services platform, we are looking to deploy a series of shared services, quite obviously. Um, on the first layer, um, on the left, you'll see SAP security services, which we've begun deploying, uh, as I mentioned, cybertrack.post, and certain elements within that are being um, rolled out in terms of compliance. Um, but also, we have also um, any process of rolling out a suit, um, which will also be of use and value to the postal sector. Um, within the cybertrack.post, we actually have deployed e -learning, um, an e-learning platform, um, a .post learning platform, to begin offering e-learning services specifically related to um, security, DNS security, cyber hygiene, and other aspects of cyber security. Um, so we have, we've rolled that out, that's currently available, and we'll talk a bit about that coming up in the, in the next few slides. Um, in terms of e-commerce services, many of you may be aware that we have been working with Post in the past, and you'll see it um, in the next few slides. Uh, e-commerce services, um, our intention is to concretize that even further and to offer a full-blown shared service um, for e-commerce that will run on the dot post um, platform. So let, look out for that in 2023, um, sort of a shared uh, e-commerce platform, including payments, um, e-commerce um, marketplace type services, you know, getting some shopping cart services and other related services that relate to e-commerce. Um, we are working to try and roll that out in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Another major project we're working on is secure email services uh, as a shared service. So we are in, in pretty advanced discussions with a key um, global email service provider who offers encrypted email. Um, so it's not the email that you might be uh, familiar with, but it's a, a encrypted email or secure email service that uh, in the first stage, we intend to provide um, a much cheaper pricing for that service that's currently available on the market for you. And we are working with this provider to, to ideally deploy it as a shared service running fully on a dot post platform. But that's something that takes a little while longer and we're working to see how best we can do something like that and um, make that service available as, as quickly as possible within the next 12 to 18 months. We're also looking to offer um, on this platform hosting services, not necessarily um, within the UPU, but with a, a partner that we will validate and, and ensure that um, has a higher sense of security that that partner or partners will be offered um, again at very reasonable prices, probably lower than market prices, as far as we can uh, work with the provider to do so. Uh, data services, we are currently in the process of rolling out a series of data initiatives with, um, with the other colleagues within the UPU, including with the, um, the, the Digital Transformation Innovation Group who are seeking to do a data-thon um, in the next um, few months. And we would like to ensure that that is hosted on the open data platform that will be hosted on the dot .post um, um, environment. And of course, a, a, sl a slew of other services that there are too many to mention here, I just call them X. Uh, so anything as a service, as you might be aware, that's what X means. Um, we, we will work with you to roll out a series of additional services based on your demand, based on your needs, but certainly based on what we believe the market is, is, is really pointing towards. And this could be you know, a series of opportunities, including things like offering conferencing and all types of services that might be available in a secure environment. So we look forward to hear from you so what we potentially can offer um, to you as a post in our service platform going forward. Just above that, you would see on the um, on the slide our applications marketplace. What we intend to talk about there is having applications. We've been approached by many people, both within the postal sector, designated operators, as well as within the wider postal um, sector, the wider postal sector players, to have applications that are you know sort of vetted and certified by us, available um, to be utilized within the postal sector. So we intend to 
to really roll that out in some form of marketplace or some environment that you can access those applications that we would have certified and vetted um, and proceed forward with that in that regard. And in sort of at the, at the top and the crowning achievement of all of this, um, we would like to, to roll out a dot post digital center of excellence where we can have best practices from all of the postal sector in digital services, um, not just the applications, not just the technology, but also the way you've implemented uh, your project management approach, your, you know, your security approach, whatever you have done to ensure that has been rolled out successfully. These best practices can be made available to all the postal sector, the wider postal sector, including designated operators, to ensure that we have a much more secure and uh, cohesive as well as advanced postal sector going forward. So why exactly are we doing this? And let's look at the current state of play. So, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily going to go into the details of these figures, but the, all of the, the, the statistics are pointing towards a challenge um, with postal volumes, national postal volumes, where it seems as if there's a significant decline, not just in, in Africa, but actually all regions. There's a decline in, in letter volumes and, and and parcel volumes and cargo volumes across the regions, and not just because of COVID-19. So as you can see on this slide, right across the world, there are negative numbers in all of the, the aspects of, uh, of your, you know, what your volumes look like. In terms of looking at a trend, as you can see, even an EMS letters and parcels, the trend is, is very much um, down. And this of course provides a challenge to the postal sector in terms of uh, revenue and uh, where um, how you can generate additional revenue going forward, uh, especially given the challenges you are, are currently facing. Um, according to these figures, there doesn't appear to be a, a rebound in, in postal volumes even after COVID-19. Um, I know the pandemic is not yet over, but there, there's not really a, a clear rebound. And the only positive um, Note we, we have um, observed is an international parcel post where that has upticked by just under 6% um, in, in the last um, in the last year, well, three years, I should say. Um, but every, every other indication um, appears to be downward. Um, there's a lot of pressure down on this currently. However, cargo is most resilient to shocks. So, when you look at the, the idea of having items that are potentially um, aspects of e-commerce um, in terms of cargo shipments, we notice that that is one thing that is generally most resilient to shocks. And this reflects a shift from not just business to consumer, um, but to business to business to consumer e-commerce. So basically, um, you know, shipping large quantities of items from business to business and then to the consumer. And the postal sector should in fact be seeking to get on board that train um, because it appears that is where the greatest potential for growth is going forward in the postal sector. So to do that, um, we are seeking to promote and advocate the, the idea of digital transformation throughout the entire postal sector. And with our colleagues within the UPU uh, who have been working on this and from a policy perspective, there is, a, there is a model that is very clearly labeled and defined as to what the priority areas for the UPU are in terms of digital transformation. Um, this looks at digital skills, digital infrastructure, um, digital inclusion, as well as basic digital economy services, e-government, digital financial services and e-commerce services. And these are all in line with our um, work with the United Nations and their drive to, to the SDGs and the forthcoming Global Digital Compact that is um, being reviewed and discussed as we speak in preparation for the Summit of the Future that will be held in 2024. Um, and looking at these particular um, levels within the, the, the policy side of the um, discussion, as you can see, there is a drive towards moving posts towards 
uh, participating fully in national, regional, and international strategies, including those related to digital upskilling, um, in terms of developing sustainable and, and secure in digital infrastructures. Uh, that, that's where dot post plays a significant role. And we do would like we do want to show and, and position the posts as key in that infrastructure going forward in your national infrastructure. And you need to see yourselves as key as in that as well. So not just only for your sector, um, your specific area, but also within the wider national sphere. In terms of digital transformation and digital services, we believe that the post can play significant roles in, in areas such as digital identity, e-health, and even wider and emerging technologies such as AI, robotics, big data, not just in terms of delivering on that, but also utilizing it within the postal sector, within your post, and becoming a model user in, in terms of deploying this technology. It'll be very, very useful to have the post position themselves as one of the leading technology uh, purveyors in, in your country and show yourself as a model user, as I said before, um, by not only uh, using it, but also delivering those services to your, your stakeholders. In that way, you, you build trust. And in that way, you'll also be able to, to improve uptake of your own services. It'll be a self-reinforcing cycle that goes on. And that's what we've been seeing thus far. So as I mentioned, this overall framework that we have, we believe will be the, the key to unlocking that digital transformation um, potential within the postal sector. And we certainly invite you to take part or to participate fully in that, um, in our digital transformation agenda that we want to work with you, um, work together with you on. We have been highlighting very recently several of our dot post group members who have been um, focused almost intensely on, on growing their digital business and digital channels. Uh, one of them, as you might or may, may or may not be aware of, is Zimbabwe, um, is Impost, and they have been, been very successful with their Zimbabwe Mall initiative uh, running on a dot post platform, as you can see, um, a quite successful initiative where they onboard significant, um, several MSMEs within their marketplace to deliver services to the post. And of course they benefit um, through the, the delivery of the products and the goods and services that would emerge from those, uh, from those um, merchants or those MSMEs that are coming on board. Tanzania as well, um, they have been deploying um, actually two aspects um, of their business on dot post, a philately shop, a stamps.tz.post, as well as poster shop tz.post which is uh, similar to what has been offered, uh, what's been showcased in Zimbabwe. So on the one hand, um, focusing on a very critical area, um, philately stamps and selling stamps online. You know, in, these, in this case, it's, it's um, physical stamps, but I'll show you later that you can even take another direction to go in the digital and crypto stamp um, direction. Um, but also, they're also working on the, um, products, you know, the product, good, the actual goods and selling those goods and delivering those goods as well. Another store that has been utilizing dot post in Uruguay to, to sell stamps, um, stamps.ui.post, again, one of our first um, proponents or, or, or exponents of the dot post platform utilizing the, um, the dot post framework. Here's another, here's an interesting, and I thought very interesting model. So we, we talk about digital services to your customers, but there's also an approach you can take by using dot post and the dot post security of the platform to deliver to your internal customers, i.e. your employees, or even your B2B, uh, in your B2B networks. So La Poste Senegal has actually gone, uh, taken a very interesting road by running their, their intranet and the internet services or the internal services on dot post because of the security levels that they're able to, to, to benefit from. So as you can see, they have been running um, their SharePoint environments running on dot post and their, their email environment, internal email environment they're running on dot post as well. So I think that's a very useful um, model that you can, you can deliver 
So you don't only have to work on a project that faces externally, but you can deliver a project that looks internally and build out your digital services within your organization and build it out securely even before you go out to the public. So I thought that was very interesting and I, and I would like to see more of that. And perhaps you can really work with us to, to work on something along those lines. I know a few posts already reached out to us um, to help them along with this project, these types of projects. So please feel free to reach out to us and we can uh, work with you to get some of these things implemented um, going forward. I mentioned before about partnering with wider postal sector players in the private sector in areas that um, you know may not be in the domain of the postal sector normally because it's not in your day-to-day -day business, but many of other wider postal sector players, um, this is their bread and butter, this is what they do on a daily basis. So they are working in the space or the spaces that are uh, considered to be emerging technology in the blockchain space, in the web 3.0 space, in the NFT space, in the digital identity space and the crypto stamp space. And this is something that we are very keen on continuing to work with our, our private sector partners on and be able to offer those types of services to you um, through our blog post platform um, as posts. Um, you may have heard of Stam Stack, who is um, one of our successful blog post group members who have since graduated and have gone fully into the um, crypto stamp world by having at least three and, and several more posts um, on board, being on board to their platform, um, Bhutan, Botswana, and um, Cote d'Ivoire have already been onboarded, and they are more underway. And as you may have heard as well, or may have seen in, in recent news, they were they were they were able to sign an MOU with um, the Pan African Postal Union Papu, and um, to work with Papu as well as ourselves and WADP to continue building out a, a, a crypto stamps marketplace on blockchain for the postal sector. So we congratulate um, Stamp Stack on this, one of our dot post group members, and um, you can contact us a little, a little more about them. Now, we also have had our recent member, Geomain, joining us. Um, Geomain is uh, basically a digital identity um, player. And they, as you can see from this particular extract of a comment they gave on joining us, they have a vision of providing a digital address for everyone. And they've already built out, and I've seen it myself, a UDID infrastructure for individuals, businesses, and organizations to bring that vision to reality. Um, so I'd like to perhaps pause here and invite Geomain um, to present um, about just about a few minutes while they present there their solution to us and allow them to come into the discussion now. So I'd like to pause here and invite Geomain to come in as we come in right at this moment and stop sharing and invite them to jump in. Great, thank you, Tracy. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is Walalavi from Geomain. It's a pleasure to join. Um, I will start by first uh, just showing you guys a short, uh, sorry, can you see me? And see no. you as yet. Nope. No. Seeing you, we're hearing you, but we can't see you as. Oh, yet. it says it says it says the video was stopped by the host. Uh, so just asking the host, um, the, um, Christoph, we can allow Saul to um, have a turn his camera and to share his screen as well. So could you please try now to open your cam? Okay, it's working now. Can you guys see me? I'm seeing a, a fuzzy, I'm seeing a fuzzy part of your screen. Ah, there we go. Some, I think you may have had it. Okay, hold on, sorry. I think it's covered. It's covered me. <laughs> I think you have tape. Uh, you have, do you have tape over your camera? No, no it's it, it. should be fine now. Uh, hold on a second. Sorry. Very, very, very. Right there we go. I think it's getting. Yes. Better. There we go. We can see you. Yes. Okay, you can see me now? Yes. Yes. Fabulous, okay, great. Uh, yes, so good morning. Uh, this is Saul Olavi. I will start by just playing a short video about uh, you know, what we do. Uh, so just give me a second, I will, I will share my screen. Thank you. 
almost 2,500 years ago, Persian king Cyrus the Great laid the foundation for modern day logistics when he invented a system for delivering letters and parcels to his citizens. That system evolved over the centuries, and today an address is defined typically by five or more lines of text to include unit number, street name, postcode, town, and country. Addresses are created by government agencies, and pretty much like relatives, you have no choice in what your address is. GeoMain changes all this by empowering you to name your address. We capture your GPS coordinates and allow you to dynamically link it to a unique identifier name that you choose. This name is called the GeoMain. GeoMain gives businesses the opportunity to enhance their brand value and much more. So how does it work? Adam, who lives in Singapore, registers a GeoMain, GeoAdam, and links it to his home's GPS coordinates. Subsequently, he moves to Hong Kong, where he simply links his new Hong Kong home's coordinates to his GeoMain. He next moves to London, and here too he captures and links his new home's GPS coordinates to GeoAdam. This makes his GeoMain his always current address for life. Neat, huh? Imagine simply scanning your GeoMain QR code or entering it instead of the long form address when booking a ride or navigating on the road, or on forms online and offline, or using your GeoMain as your geo-validated ID, adding a much needed extra layer of security to your transactions. Well, imagine no more. Get your unique GeoMain now before someone else does. All you need is a GeoMain. Okay, uh, there is a there is another presentation that I would like uh, to share with everybody here. So just bear with me, please, while I pull that up. Okay, great. So uh, this is the, the the first slide is actually the video which everybody has just watched. So I'll move on to the next slide. So essentially, GeoMain just enables everybody with a phone to establish an address for life. Um, there, it, it's available in the in the form of a mobile app that's uh, that's available on both the Google Play Store as well as the Apple uh, Store. It's available today for download. Um, you will uh, be able to enter your name. Uh, you'll be able to create a GeoMain uh, subject to availability, and you'll be able to enter your first name, last name, phone number, and an email. Uh, we would send you an OTP, which is a one-time password to validate uh, the phone number. And uh, then your GeoMain has basically been registered, and that's your digital identity for life. Uh, a very important way of looking at this uh, is that you know we are basically a, a, a universal location platform, an open source universal location platform, and uh, what this does is that you can use your GeoMain for, uh, you know, we envision that a GeoMain would be able to be used for signing in, signing up, uh, you know, any kind of interaction you do with the uh, digital ecosystem around you uh, would actually require. A, a, a digital identity. At the moment, uh, uh, you know, for lack of people having a digital identity, uh, everybody uses emails and passwords, which we know are not secure at all. So uh, we are actually the missing link between the individual and the ecosystem that surrounds us. Uh, okay. My next slide seems to be disappeared and I'm trying to figure out what's wrong. Hold on a second, let me just. Okay, maybe I need to stop sharing and load this again. Sorry, just give me a second while I do that, please.
Okay, we got it back. Uh, so this. Okay, so uh, so GeoMean also replaces the tedious error prone and forgettable four or five line addresses that we have. So, so because we we actually have thought outside the box when we are developing the app and we use uh, the GPS coordinates themselves. Um, we are map agnostic, so you can actually use any map that's available, the local map, Google Maps, your maps, whatever. Um, and because it's GPS, it's actually the accuracy is typically limited to about five to 10 meters from the actual spot. Uh, it's it's the equivalent of uh, you know one way of looking at it is that a geomain is very similar to a domain. A domain would point to a URL or a website, whereas a geomain would point to a GPS coordinate or a physical address. So we all know that addresses uh, generally are you know the five line addresses, the standard format we currently use are uh, you know fairly difficult to remember, uh, cumbersome, and obviously even from a handling point of view, um, uh, you know, they're, 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 they're fairly inefficient. Uh, we've got some other solutions in the market like what three words, uh, which are random, uh, three words that are used to identify a location. Um, and we've got even Google has a similar thing, it's called the plus codes, uh, which again are random alphanumeric numbers. Uh, as you can see in this example over here. And again, these are very difficult to remember. So Geomain is actually unique in that we are offering custom names, which can um, basically be uh, created by the user himself or herself. And uh, they will then be registered as a digital identity in our registry, which is uh, the uh, Geomain registry. Uh, the other important thing to note is that uh, Geomain is available in seven different character sets, so that pretty much covers most of the languages on the, you know, spoken on the planet. Um, and there is a matching QR code for each, uh, uh, you know, for each uh, geomain. Uh, so it is it, it it is a true digital identity. If you look at the uh, if you know if you look at the actual potential of this. Um, uh, you know, let's 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 look at, at domain names, which are the next best thing of that that we can compare this to at this moment. So we've got about 315 million registered domain names as I speak, and uh, the uh, you know right now um, what we what we're saying is that the total available market, uh, you know, proven market is 350 million domain names. Um, we are assuming that about only five percent of the people. Uh, would would actually go and buy a matching geomain and again this is a freemium model so the vast majority of consumers would be able to obtain their geomain free of course by downloading the app um, some of them who would want a you know what we call a premium geomain which would be two three or four character geomains uh, then they would actually be required to pay for it and that's our revenue model so our revenue model really revolves around uh, those businesses who want a geomain name and we think the vast majority of people who own a domain would want a matching geomain um, and obviously people that are going to you know who would like to have it a, a vip or a, a or a short geomain name and they would be required to uh, you know pay an annual fees just like they do for a domain name um, we'll move to the next slide, which is uh, diverse revenue streams. Yes, so these are the different revenue streams that Geomain earns. So people, uh, uh, or, you know, organizations like post offices that come in as uh, uh, Geomain partners would, uh, you know, they essentially become custodians of the digital identity in their respective countries, and they are able to earn uh, revenue streams from a variety of different sources. Uh, these are just about five of the diverse revenue streams that have been listed here. So obviously it's, it's, it's the sale of geomain names, it's API licensing fees, then there are business uh, pages that are available on the geo, uh, you know, on, on, on the business geomains uh, and, and that's paid advertising. Then we've got things like heat maps and stuff which are in the pipeline, they'll be coming in and they, they, they too are going to earn revenue for the respective uh, postal partners. And obviously address and identity, ver identity verification uh, APIs for KYC purposes, which as we all know is a huge business opportunity uh, for the postal partners uh, to uh, you know, look forward to. So the unique value proposition and sustainable competitive advantage. So universal digital identity, it's, uh, you know, it can be used as a gateway, uh, access gateway for all apps. Uh, the, you know, it's a custom name, seven, seven, 
naming seven different character sets as I just mentioned a while ago. Um, if you look at the app, uh, one of the unique features of Geomin is that the app, app allows for you to upload instructions to the door in four different formats. So you could take photos, you could take a video, you could uh, scribble some text onto a field and say, this is how you get to the door. And obviously you could also uh, do a voice uh, recording as well. So what happens is every time, for example, if a pizza guy wants to deliver pizza to you uh, or, or, or a mailman wants to deliver mail and he cannot locate where you are, uh, you, don't, you know, he doesn't have to call you. He can just uh, listen to the instructions that you've uploaded once and he or she would be able to get to where you are. And obviously there's even real-time geo-validation, which has tremendous uh, use cases, in, especially in the financial services industry when it comes to uh, fraud prevention and all these other uh, you know, important uh, banking functionalities. Uh, where are we at at the moment? This is the milestone. So um, uh, we are in the process of appointing Geomi name registrars. Uh, we are uh, in discussions with uh, members of the UPU to do some pilot projects with them. Uh, we are also uh, working on, on, on a project called the Eastam project, which would actually use uh, geomains to generate uh, QR uh, code stamps that could be, uh, you know, uh, digitally generated using an app and it could be uh, uh, made available to all the consumers uh, from the comfort of their homes and from uh, you know really the comfort of their devices. Uh, there are some curated deployments we're working on in, uh, in you know, a couple of countries which are going to involve e-commerce players, logistic players and everything because we want to test that and see exactly what kind of results we can expect and be able to generate some white papers for future uh, use case deployments in uh, the developed countries. Uh, this is just a very quick uh, uh, slide on the uh, on the ESTAM. Uh, so this is what, the, what a typical ESTAM would look like. That would be generated on your app, uh, which 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 we can embed within existing uh, postal partners' uh, mobile applications. So a lot of postal partners have their own uh, mobile apps available, and uh, this this module can be made available to them to embed within their app for the benefit of the consumers where they can generate this uh, e-stamps and uh, the, the beauty being obviously that they do not necessarily have to print these stamps so they can further save costs by simply scribbling the unique stamp ID which is uh, stated on the stamp on an envelope and as most postal partners already have uh, OCR technology available when it comes to handling mail, uh, we could actually provide an API which could uh, very easily link with existing postal partners where they could read and uh, delete these stamps. So these are all single use stamps once the stamp has been read and scanned by the postal authority uh, and um, you know that is handling the mail, then uh, a similar code would simply not work again. It would not be authorized and it would throw out that, that, that piece of letter or parcel uh, if the code has already been used. So it is very secure. And the other additional ele element in terms of security also is that every stamp is unique to both the sender and the recipient. So hypothetically, even if this uh, code was compromised, uh, uh, there would be absolutely no use uh, to anybody who is actually uh, uh, you know, stealing this code because uh, that particular letter or parcel can only be delivered to the recipient who, for whom it was, for whom this e-stamp was generated. Um, these are some of the other use cases uh, we've got in terms of the ride hailing. So ride hailing is very important. Uh, we've got a, a major ride, uh, you know, a player in, in, in Asia called Grab. They're essentially the, the, the Uber of Asia. Um, they're present in several countries in the Far East and uh, you know, one of the, you know, in, in discussions with them, uh, mm -hmm. they basically told us that one of the major problems they have is that 2.5 to 5% 2 to of bookings are lost or cancelled because uh, of mapping issues. Now, you know, what we need to understand very clearly is that uh, most of these ride hailing apps use uh, the major mapping service providers, i.e. Google or Here Maps, and in, uh, in, you know, in most cases, um, obviously, this information is, is, is not only is it not updated in real time, uh, 
so a lot of that information is not current. Um, and the other problem that we have is that the maps themselves are not very accurate. So when you do reverse geocoding on the on the basis of this uh, of this uh, map, then uh, what happens is that uh, you know the the accuracy fails. So uh, GeoMain offers uh, GPS level accuracy. We do not care what is the mapping uh, solution behind it because we are map agnostic. Uh, so ride hailing as well has huge potentials on this. So when uh, your customers uh, at, uh, you know, actually buy a geomain from postal partners, uh, then obviously they would be able to uh, achieve the benefits that come with it. Um, as a as a geomain partner, post operators would also be uh, uh, de facto registrars. So you can earn money on registrations uh, for the geomains that are registered in your country and uh, there are obviously additional benefits that would come in in terms of the advertising revenues that would come in as well so everything that we do we actually share with our respective partners uh, and for the, you know the, finally uh, the leadership team so it's myself and my colleague mr hugh sutherland so we're the co-founders of this company uh, we obviously have a technology you know technology team and an ever expanding business team now that's uh, looking after the various deployments uh, that are uh, basically currently in play. So uh, do we need to, uh, if there are any questions, uh, or do we have a question session at the end? So for this one, I think we should take the questions now. Um, so do anybody, okay. does anybody have any questions for Geomain? Um, don't know if I can allow anybody to talk. I will try. I see engineer Fifi. Let me see if I could allow you to talk, engineer. Hang on a sec. Go ahead, engineer Fifi. Go ahead. So, Tracy, we have engineer Fifi. Mr. Usamaru Atbi and Mr. Chief Moyo raising yeah. their hands. Yeah, I understand. I'm not seeing engineers, Mike. I'm not sure if he can unmute us, unmute himself. Um, let me see if um, Mr. Tabi Usama, can you can you speak? Let me see. Unmute yourself. Is that possible? Hello. Yes. Go ahead. Hello, Tracy. Yes. Proceed. Thank you, uh, Gio Main, for this uh, presentation. I, I have welcome. a question about uh, physical address. So yes. does it mean that uh, for some needs for our customers, they need more than one address, physical address? Does it mean that uh, they have to, to, uh, to register for uh, more than Gio Main? Okay, uh, when you when you're talking about uh, some cu some customers needing more than one address, are you referring to, for example, you know, let's say McDonald's, which which would have maybe ten or twenty branches in you know in one city? Is that is that the kind of use case you're referring to? Is that your question, or you're talking about an individual who may have uh, more than one home, perhaps? And uh, is that what you're referring to? Right, right. That is okay. Uh, in Right. In the case of businesses, uh, if you have a, obviously you need to register a business geomain and business geomains do support what we call sub geomains and sub geomains work very similar to sub domains. So for example, you, you, let's say, let's say McDonald's again, let's take them as an example. So, uh, you know, 7th Avenue, New York branch could have a geomain called 7th.ny.mcdonald's. Um, and uh, the one that's on 11th could have 11th.ny.mcdonalds. So you can create as many as you wish uh, sub geomains. And obviously, every sub geomain, because business geomains are handled differently, so sub geomains, uh, the more that the more branches there are, uh, there are going to be obviously more revenues for the postal partners because each sub geomain would have an additional cost associated with it. And the way that we have done it is that each, each particular sub geomain would also have their own advertising module so they can run separate advertising campaigns. So again, going back to the McDonald's example, so 7th Avenue could be running a special promotion at a specific time and they could create that campaign uh, by logging into their accounts 
uh, and uh, 11th Avenue could do the same as, as well. So they could all be running different advertisements. And again, all those advertisements are paid and that revenue is shared with our postal, you know, with our registrars, which in this case would be the postal partners. Now coming down to the individual level, the way that it works is, uh, if you have a personal geomin, which is a free one, then you can create as many geo, or what we call geo spots. Or so, so let's say if you've got, uh, you know, uh, two houses or three houses, and you've got, uh, you know, uh, your, you know, your family homes and what have you. So you can create an, an unlimited number of uh, of, uh, of geo spots or favorite locations. But the only condition is that at any any given time you can only link one geospot to your geomain. So if your geomain would be Osama, and let's say you are linking it to your first home, uh, then if I want to navigate to you and you're added, to, uh, added as my contact, then in one single click, I could navigate to you to your uh, you know, home number one, if that's what you're linked to. If you have linked it to home number two, then I would be routed to home number two. So I do not know where you are, but insofar as if you tell me, uh, yeah, come and meet me uh, and, and you know, just, just uh, navigate to me using Geomain, then I don't have to know where you are because I will just enter Usama and I will be automatically navigated to wherever you have dropped your pin, if you know what I mean. Thank you. Does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes, I think yeah. it does. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, there's a question in the chat, but I will go to Chief Moyo from Papu, who has his hand up. Let me allow him to speak, and you can go ahead, um, Chief Moyo, and unmute yourself and ask your question. Proceed. Uh, good. Good morning and good afternoon to the participants uh, to this webinar. And uh, once more, thank you very much, UPU, for facilitating this uh, webinar. And uh, thank you, uh, Hexo, for giving me the floor. Uh, like to appreciate the presentation by Geomain. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, I couldn't get time to sit down with uh, uh, my friend from Geomain to speak more. Uh, on the issues to do with uh, the services they provide. What I would want to uh, bring out is that uh, uh, designated operators are looking at solutions that really uh, help to improve customer service, uh, popularly referred to as quality of service, but uh, most importantly, they would want to uh, get uh, services that will add value to customer uh, um, service initiatives. Uh, having listened to the uh, Geomain uh, presentation, which is quite an innovation, uh, I would want to uh, pose a question uh, to the presenter to find out if he has looked at uh, the UPU S58, S59 addressing standard to see how it relates to the solution that is coming up with. Uh, in short, uh, I would want to know if his solution means we have to discard, throw away all the addressing infrastructure that we have, or it is complementary, or it can be interfaced so that uh, we actually consolidate on the gains that we have made over the years. Thank you very much. Uh, I would appreciate a response to my question. I have sure. the floor sure. to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Chief Moe. Well, a pleasure to speak again. Yes, uh, uh, you know, I uh, I do regret we did not have the opportunity to uh, have a detailed discussion during our last meeting in Bern, uh, but hopefully at the next meeting we will be having that opportunity. Uh, in answering your question, uh, we are actually in the process of, uh, of, of getting certified by the UPU. 
Um, it is one, it is a process that we expect to be completed over the next four to six months. Um, and uh, once we are certified by the UPU, then obviously, uh, you know, we would be compliant with the, with the relevant standards of the UPU. So that is part of the reason why we are going through this entire certification process. Um, and uh, in answering your second question, uh, I do not really think that we are looking at a scenario where we would expect the, uh, you know, post, post to essentially, uh, as you know, quote unquote, as you put it, throw away all the existing thing that's happened. Uh, however, what we are definitely looking at is because we are all moving towards a digital world. Uh, there has to be a transformation. The transformation calls for changes, and those changes, basically, in this particular case, would obviously mean uh, bringing in a new, you know, new systems and new solutions, and that is, uh, you know, GeoMain in this particular, you know, particular case. Now, because GeoMain works entirely on GPS, so uh, no, we do not use any of the existing addressing. Um, uh, uh, structures that are in place. So, so no, we are not based on the postcode. We are not based on a street name. We are not based on a street number. So, we are to, you know totally unique and, as you quite rightly put it, a very innovative solution. However, uh, we have built in the flexibility where we can link to an existing addressing system. So we are talking to one post operator already now in the Middle East who have gotten an existing uh, uh, national uh, database uh, for uh, addressing where, you know, they call it, you know, they refer to, to it as a short address. Uh, so they said, look, we, we've already done all the hard work for this. And now, you know, how are we going to, uh, you know, uh, work with GeoMain? So what we've suggested to them and what we're now working on with them is to actually see if we could uh, essentially map their short short address to, to you know to a geomain because geomain being a universal digital identity something that could be used globally and we envision that you'd be able to um, uh, provide this as your address to you know when you're shopping online be it with amazon or be it with anybody else uh, and, and these are all efforts and discussions that obviously are ongoing at the moment so we hope to you know that they will bear fruit or, you know over the next few months uh, where you should be able to uh, to, to use a geomain at, at most of these places. Uh, so uh, uh, there will be a transitionary period, I think, uh, where uh, we, as you know, as as adoption grows, and mind you, this adoption will grow primarily because it will be driven by the. Uh, e-commerce players by the logistics players because those are the guys who actually start making money and start benefiting from the efficiencies of geomain from the minute they start using it so they are the ones who are going to actually push and drive this so when you go and you set up an account with an e-commerce player they are not going to ask you for an address anymore or they will say you know enter geomain uh, because it is much more efficient for them they are not going to have any returns uh, they're going to uh, you know uh, as as we know in the logistics industry, uh, returns of poor addressing or address integrity, as we call it, is a major issue. So all of these issues go out of the window with Geomain. So we see the, we, you know, the drivers are going to be the the uh, even government players. We are talking to one government where they are talking, uh, you know, where, where, where we are in discussion with them. And the whole idea is that, uh, you know, how are they going to get critical mass in terms of adoption? And they said, well, we have e-services that we offer and we could, uh, at the moment, we are using our national identity card for people to access that and an email and password, which obviously we know is not really secure. So uh, they, they, they are now talking about coming in and using Geomain as the entry point for all those e-services. So everybody, every citizen who uses the e-services would then start uh, to, you know, they would need to acquire a Geomain and get that. So that's how they are talking about getting critical mass. So it's going to be a transitionary period, which is obviously going to uh, take, uh, you know, uh, you know, Time. Obviously, the, you know, it is a new technology, it's innovation, you know, it's, it is an innovative technology, but by all means, this transitionary period will see a, if there will be a parallel track where the existing solution would work and, you know, Geomain would obviously uh, come in and we would expect that, uh, you know, people will start using Geomains. And in a few years time, you know, we may reach a scenario where the vast majority of all uh, addresses are actually Geomain addresses. Um, and, uh, you know, then at that stage, we would need to figure out, you know, what we do with the old conventional addresses and how we how we deal with that. So uh, and, and then again, that is something, you know, which is really going to be the UPU call. So I hope that answers your question. All right, I believe it sounds as if it does. 
Now, I'm seeing quite a few questions coming in, but we do have to continue proceeding. So what I'm going to do is end the queue here. I'm going to <clears throat> ask a question that's in the chat and show all, all participants who are participating get a you know get equal play. Um, so I believe you can see this question. Is Geomene a privately controlled system or has some national or higher or international hierarchical structure and control? I think that's an easy question to answer. Yes, uh, the way that we are structuring Geomain is uh, uh, that, uh, you know, what we would ideally, uh, at the moment, we are obviously on the cloud um, and it's a hybrid cloud, so it's uh, so spread across a few countries. However, what we uh, you know envision is that what's going to happen is that uh, Geomain uh, registries would, uh, you know, should actually remain within national borders and the data for the respective citizens would remain within national borders. So again, this is where the post comes in, um, that if the postal uh, or the local postal operator are partners of Geomain, then this is another, this is, this is a responsibility of theirs to essentially house the data for their, that for their own citizens and residents within national borders. So, uh, um, you know, one of the post operators we are talking to now, uh, we are already uh, in, in, in discussion with them uh, because they want to be able to scope the requirements that they would need at their end in order to make sure, because they're very keen to have all the data for the citizens housed within national borders. So we, we strongly encourage that. Uh, smaller countries who simply do not have the infrastructure or the investment available to be able to do that, we are happy to continue to house that data in the cloud. Uh, but over a period of time, as we, um, you know, as we all move towards a, a world that's more uh, uh, focused and centric on privacy issues, I think that uh, data with the national borders is definitely the way to go. All right, thank you very much, Snow. Um, so here's what I'm going to do, because we, we're going to run out of time quickly if we continue with all the questions um, in verbal. So I'm going to end the question queue here. Um, and if you have any further questions, please put them in the Q&A pod. If you don't mind, colleagues who are asking questions and maybe Jamie can answer them while we continue with the presentation shortly. So I'll go straight on to engineer Fifi, who, can you try again to unmute yourself? As you can see, everyone else is able to. Engineer Fifi, can you please unmute yourself to ask your question? Engineer Fifi from Tanzania. Yes, thank you. Go ahead, Engineer Fifi. Please keep the question short, please. Thank you. Okay, my question is, you, you the presenter talks, explained about the East Thames. He said by that he, the East Thames can be embedded into humane. So I want to know, is there any possibility for the the process of for payment, how about the process of payment once the Geomain and the East Temple has been embedded? Also, is there any possibility for the post operators to have a full control for, 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 for that system? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, your voice wasn't very clear. I, I, I barely heard the second part of the question and I think the first part of the question was, you were asking how would the payment be handled for e-stamps? Is that what your question was? Could you please repeat? Yes, yes, yes. Because you said that it, it is possible to embed the e-stamps and the geo, geo main. So I want to know the, the process of payment. How about the process of payment? How, how the payment can be handled by the post operators? Okay, post and what was your second question? Sorry, what was the second part of your question? The, the second part of the, my question is, about the full, full full access of the system. Is it possible to have the full, full access of the system so that you can see all the, 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 the tracking of the, of the item, maybe the, the, the payment processes, all the, the things which have been done in the system. So the possibilities to see all the, the, the transactions or the, the tracking of the item from one place to another, 
Okay, okay, all right, okay. So let me answer both your, uh, you know, both your questions. So uh, first and foremost, in terms of the payment solutions, yes, there, you know, we are building the necessary infrastructure that we will make available to the post operators uh, a solution where they would essentially have what we call a post e-wallet. Uh, and that post e-wallet can be funded by people walking into your post office and saying, well, you know, here's $10, can we add it to our post wallet? And they would be able to use that to purchase stamps. And by extension, if the post office wants to then uh, add on external solutions where they could uh, use that same e-wallet uh, at, at local stores, you know, to buy, uh, to buy drinks, to buy coffee, to buy whatever, then that's again, all stuff that can be very easy to customize. So our solution is built it's, it's, you know, it's an open solution which will be built to accommodate all these kind of use cases moving forward. Um, so it is, it, it does have an e-wallet built in, in short. So I hope that that answers that question. And, 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 and the way the e-wallet is typically funded would be by people, as I said, walking into post and handing over cash or paying by any other method that is acceptable to you guys, right? In answering to your second question, you have to understand that when you actually become a, a geomain partner and a uh, you know the the, the e stamp one of the key benefits of the e stamp is that for the first time ever uh, post would be able to know uh, their customers at the moment people can come in and buy a stamp and they would walk away and you wouldn't know what's happening with that stamp you wouldn't know who's purchased a stamp you wouldn't know what's going to be done with that stamp so when you actually become a geomain partner then you have full visibility even more extensive than what couriers have today in terms of the tracking capability. So you, yes, uh, you know, if you remember the e-stamp that I showed you on the slide, uh, you know, every e-stamp would have a unique number, uh, not just you, but even the sender and the recipient would both be able to track that that unique e-stamp and, uh, and, and that parcel or, or, or letter on which that e-stamp is pasted. So you'd be able to know exactly where it is. Uh, you would even be able to, uh, you know, once, once the post uh, scans it and it's on the way, then the recipient can receive a notification saying, look, this is this letter is now on its way to you. Uh, uh, so uh, yes, I mean, all kind of wonderful things which are uh, real innovations. Uh, which have not been available till date, definitely with post, and even uh, some of them are not even available with courier today. Uh, they're all in the pipeline, and they're all going to be part of the e-stamp solution, uh, which we are uh, hoping to launch with dot post. Thank you very much, Sol. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure if you're aware. There are several questions in the Q and A pod, Sol that require an answer. And um, I, I'm gonna ask if you can answer those questions in the Q&A pod. Um, some of them you may have answered already, including from engineer Fifi, but there are a couple others in the pod. Um, next on my list is Ibrahim and uh, Lareku. Um, those are the two I'm gonna take now and then we have to end the verbal Q&A, but everything else please post in the Q&A pod so that Geomain can answer the questions in writing thereafter. So, Ibrahim? Sure. You could unmute yourself, Ibrahim, if you um, can. Hello, good morning or good afternoon over there. Yes. My name is Ibrahim. I'm representing Australian Postal Services in Sierra Leone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, I've already yes, I can my... hear you, Ibrahim. It, it, yes, it, it is I've already morning posed now. my I'm questions. In yeah, uh, my question is just about the transition framework, I mean, frame time period. So the question is this, what is the transition time frame for Geomail to take over the existing one? And that is the postal addressing system. So what's plus or minus the time frame? Is this like a two year period? or a one year period or more than that? Okay, uh, that's that's an interesting question, but one that, I, uh, that I'm afraid I cannot answer very accurately because it really depends on how quickly adoption happens by the postal operators. So uh, for, 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 you know, for Geomain to work uh, in perfect efficiency, if I may put it that way, 
uh, what we would really need is we we would need mass adoption of of geomain by the postal networks so they can handle all uh, the packages and parcels in the most efficient way. And uh, what I think is going to happen is obviously, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you will have, a, uh, you know, a lot of this adoption will be driven by the uh, private sector where they, and, and even the government sectors, uh, where they would actually require people to start using geomain. So as that happens, it's, it's, it's definitely going to be something that's going to be in tandem. Uh, but uh, if I were to take a guess, I would say that uh, considering the fact that the you know there are all, almost 200 countries we are looking at at, at, at adoption happening uh with with various speeds in each of them uh, i think that by the time we will be looking at an entire uh you know almost entirely uh, uh geomain ecosystem uh you know it could be four to five years before we actually see the and you know uh, we are able to uh achieve the the full efficiencies and the economies of scale that geomain would bring uh, because it, it's not going to work if you are going to have uh, fragmented initiatives and only some countries working and some countries not working. So this is exactly where, again, the UPU comes in in their role uh, and, and obviously dot post uh, that uh, that insofar as, uh, you know, as soon as we are able to complete the certification process, uh, we would be working very aggressively with them to geomain enable uh, as many postal partners as we can and as quickly as we can uh, so that all these benefits would start working and uh, the, the um, you know, decline that we are seeing in postal volumes and postal revenues can then be arrested and hopefully reversed because as I said, there are tremendous opportunities for additional revenue streams and, and innovations that come with Geomain. Right. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank You're you. You're welcome. And the final verbal question from Lerico. I'm going to allow you to speak. Proceed, Lerico. You need to unmute yourself if you're if you're speaking. If not, I'll have to move on. All right. So I think Lerico may have moved on. Lerico, if you are listening and you can't unmute, please post your question in the Q and A pod. So as a reminder to all, you can continue posting questions to Geomain in the Q and A pod. And I I'm looking at Sol and I'm hoping that he will be um, willing to to answer those questions in the pod thereafter. And so I'll be, be delighted to do so. Thank you. And if you stick around to the end, you may get some more at the end as well. All right. So sure. I'll just move on with the remainder of the presentation. And thank you very much, Sol, for an extremely enlightening and, as you can see, very interesting and, and engaging session with our um, colleagues from the African Post. It seems to be quite a lot of interest in what you're doing. It's so my pleasure. That's excellent. And we look forward to working with the African Postal Union to enable post in Africa as quickly as we possibly can and as quickly as they possibly can, because it's, it works in tandem, as I said. Excellent. And of course, you can contact Sol through us at dot post. Um, feel free to reach out to us. We'll give you his, our contact information at the end of this presentation. Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Tracy. No problem. So I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and reshare my screen and um, return to the presentation that I was working on. Um, here we go. I think we're back. So this is where we are on Soul's, Soul's um, image. So I'll just move on from here. Thank you very much, Soul, and you mean once again. And Hugh, if Hugh's um, listening. So I had mentioned previously about our cyber trust, cybersecurity and cyber tr and trust framework. And as you can see in this, I'm coming back to my my framework to show you where we sit at the just above the governance and compliance area, the security infrastructure, and explain um, what we offer at the dot post um, group in terms of our security infrastructure. So, as you may be aware, um, we we are dealing with a series of aspects of cyber security within the dot post um, team. Um, on the left, top left, you see domain validation and our domain management policy really ensures that those who own a dot post domain or register a dot post domain are in fact the people who actually apply for one. We, we have a very stringent um, domain validation policy and only those who 
are, are thoroughly vetted and, and um, you know, there's a due diligence that's undertaken. Only those people can get dot post domains. That is very different. All right. I think there's someone who, Amisam, can you just mute the person who might be speaking there? Appreciate that. So if you can mute your mics for those who are not speaking, appreciate it. Um, so yeah, so what I was saying is that the domain validation approach that we take um, ensures that anybody who, who registers a .post domain is the person who we say they are. Um, so unlike other many other um, top level domains where anybody can register and sort of impersonate another uh, entity, that cannot happen here with a dot post, a dot post top level domain. Um, and all of our domains are verified by the UPU, um, even up to our legal department, and have to respect the 30 day notification period where it is put out for public notification for anybody to object or, um, you know, to, to, to indicate there's a conflict in, in some, some sort, a trademark, et cetera. We have a series of cybersecurity policies um, that are available on our website that these security cybersecurity policies allow us to ensure that your environment is extremely secure. Nothing is 100% sec secure, as I always say, but we, we do our extreme best to ensure that we get as close to that as humanly possible, more so than any other top level domain is currently doing. Um, so we have a series of policies which you must follow uh, once you have a .post domain and that we are actually monitoring that compliance that I'll get into shortly. The UPU um, has imp implemented an anti-DNS um, abuse system where the .post do top level domain is in fact one of the very few domains globally who has never experienced a DNS abuse incident. And again, nothing is 100% certain, but the, the measures we take to ensure um, who gets a .post domain is in fact uh, verified and vetted and, and checked, et cetera, gives us very, very good reason to believe that we can continue this going forward. So anybody who sees a .post domain, if you have an email address that ends in .post, if you have a website that ends in .post, you can rest assured that it is a safe, secure, and the person who is, or the company who is utilizing that domain is in fact the company who says they are who they are. I mentioned before that we are in the process of rolling out a cyber incident response team for, for the postal sector under dot post, and that is currently underway in conjunction with our, um, the organization which we report to the Postal Technology Center. And um, I'm hopeful that You'll see the uh, evidence of that very shortly and that suit being rolled out um, so that you can register um, potentially register proactive incidents regarding the DNS at the postal sector. And we can also inform you as well as to what is happening within the internet space or the global internet space and the DNS. And you can take necessary precautions accordingly. Skills development, we are working with our various partners, one of them, the Global Cyber Alliance, several others we are currently working with, including potentially the ITU, to ensure that you can get um, the best quality, self-paced learning um, and skills development within our dot post learning environment. Um, we, we, we have lots of webinars, as you are seeing today, but we also will be offering self-paced um, learning modules for you to, to utilize. Um, as I indicated previously, I'll show you that shortly in our cybertrap.post, very brief demo. And as before, I mentioned our domain compliance monitoring, um, where we provide real-time monitoring and support of your um, domain, whether it's in compliance with our cybersecurity policies that we have currently implemented at the UPU. These policies, uh, as on this slide, um, focus heavily on the various standards that ensure security, both at the server level in terms of your environment, um, whether you're on-premise or, or not on-premise or in some sort of hybrid environment, as well with regards to your email, to try and ensure that your, your email running um, on the DOSPOS environment will in fact be 
highly secure once you follow the, the standards and you're compliant with our standards that we have indicated thereafter. thereafter. Uh, as I mentioned, we did launch Cybertrap.post, our domain compliance monitoring tool on May 11th, 2022, just this year, a few months ago. Um, and for all dot post group members who have access to this, so to have access to this, you must be a dot post group member. And dot post group members provide their focal point contact information to us, and they're the ones who are able to, to see and to get notifications about their dot post domains. So I will explain how that works shortly uh, by showing you a short demo. But in summary, the Cybertrap.post compliance tool is a fully automated web-based tool providing real-time monitoring of dot post domains with regards to technical compliance to our approved cybersecurity policies, including DNSSEC, secure email authentication, and secure online transactions. This tool supports access per country, and focal points, as I said, receive email alerts in case of non-conformity events. Um, within the Cybertrack.post platform as well, we have our learning platform that we have deployed uh, very recently, and the intention is to ensure we have self-paced learning available to all .post group members who are able to access this platform, and we have. Um, initiated one, one bootcamp on DMARC in partnership with our uh, Global Cyber Alliance that's currently um, available on our dot post learning platform. As I mentioned, working with several other partners, including the ITU, to deploy several others going forward uh, over the next 12 to 18 months. This learning platform can be accessed via cybertrack.post and we offer a range of, we're gonna be offering a range of topics and learning, awareness, and capacity building focused on cyber hygiene, cybersecurity, and of course, dot post tools and solutions. And just to give you a, a 90 second demo, there's no audio, so there'll be no audio except my voice, show you a quick demo as to what this looks like. So this is our um, brief demo of the Cybertrack tool. And as you can see, you go to cybertrack.post if you are a dot post group member, you will be able to log into this tool. Uh, once your dot post member have credentials. And on this tool, you can see your domain and your and the level of compliance that overall compliance that your domain um, has. To do that, um, you take a look at the status, whether it's what is okay, and the date on which that test was run. That date obviously is run um, every morning um, and UTC time. And we, but you could also run that test on your own, as I'll show you shortly. Um, you can expand that each domain and see what the test is testing and the status of each test, whether it's okay or not okay. And we also provide some help to show you essentially what could be possibly wrong with that, um, that particular um, test and why it is that you are receiving a non-compliance report. Um, you can receive alerts by simply toggling how you get those alerts, whether it be exception based or regularly. Um, we also, I mentioned, have the .post learning platform. And as, as I said, you can log into this and get access to self-paced material. Currently, we have a DMARC bootcamp available to you, .post group members. And we have a series of other links to get to other .post environments. So that was a 90 second demo of Cybertrack.post. And as again, .post group members have access to this contact us as to how to join a dot post group and to obtain access to this um, tool. I did mention previously that we are one of the very few domains in the world who have never had a, a, a DNS abuse incident um, because I mentioned of our approach to um, how we register and um, deal with domain registration as a process. Um, so we've had zero domains have been abused on a dot post to date. Um, DNS abuse, as you may be aware, is becoming an even more critical issue, especially for posts who are um, operating in environments where they, they receive increasing amounts of emails um, coming in through spam and, and other types of, mm -hmm. of, of channels. Uh, and your employees um, very often are liable to open an email that may look 
um, confusingly similar um, in terms of its domain to something that is, is you know, like a, a normal or regular domain. That is obviously one major avenue where you get uh, malware and potentially ransomware attacks coming in, into your organization. And um, without getting into the details of the, the prevalence of ransomware, um, it is on the rise. And it is, as you may be aware, as um, postal operators, it can be extremely expensive on all levels, both in terms of actual cost as well as in terms of cost of your, your business, um, and cost of your cost to your customers, cost to your overall employees in terms of data being stolen and placed online on a dark web for sale and so on. It's 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 a really really huge problem that's that's growing every day, and many folks um, don't don't realize that the first avenue in is through a DNS abuse attack. So we we are doing our very best to prevent that from happening. I mentioned before we have our cybersecurity our cyber incident response team that we're establishing. And we'll keep you informed as to how well that is going and exactly what methods you can use to report incidents as well as we can report back to you. Um, we intend to um, work with our registrars and registrants when we further open up the dot post namespace to other wider postal sector players. And we'll be able to utilize our knowledge bases accordingly to keep you informed as to pro proactively inform us the incidents that are happening in the internet space so that you can take measures accordingly. At this point, I will want to hand over now to my colleague, Mesam Sabra, to basically go through with you how you can register a dot post domain and the process that's currently entailed. Mesam? Yes, Tracy, thank you. Do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. My name is Maisam Sabra. I am the Dot Post Projects Assistant, and I'm very happy to uh, give you a quick overview about the Dot Post uh, domain registration process. Tracy, could you please go to the next slide? Thank you. So here we see we see a question: Who is using Dot Post? So as we are talking to today about innovation and digital transformation, let me remind you that dot post is designed to be a space of digital transformation and innovation. And our dot post members are doing great job and making a great use of their dot post domains. Uh, by inter to interconnect their services with the global uh, postal community and also uh, to open up the possibility to the digital services and some interesting business models. So if you visit the slide that is indicated on this slide, the site, sorry, the link, which is indicated on this slide, you will see who is using dot post and how they are using it. You will find some very successful business models that you might be interesting to learn from or to use for your future business models. Next slide, please, Tracy. One very important question is why you should register your dot post domains now. So um, something very important that uh, you should always consider it when you build your, uh, your online business is the trust and security and the visibility of your business. So you can trust a dot post domain because the UPU ensures that every owner of dot post domain is verified and comply with the standard security of the dot post domains. So uh, also, as you know, dot post is 100% secure, has it's 100% uh, secured by the DNS sec and is the most secure top level domain for the postal community on the internet. And another important point uh, for why you should register a dot post domain is for your visibility. 
So the dot post domain provides a clear and unmistakable brand for your postal services. It raises the profile of your organization, extends it beyond the national frontiers, and therefore it can um, it can provide greater oppor opportunities for growth. Regarding uh, the registration steps, maybe we can move directly to the next slide, uh, Tracy. Yes, so uh, maybe some of you uh, are that are with us today online are already dot post members and they know how to register their domains but maybe others they they ask how can we we we, we register a dot post domain what are the steps to 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 be followed um before we go to the process okay <laughs> okay no problem we can go to the process directly Yes, so I want to tell you that the registration process is really very easy and simple. So first of all, what you want to do is to join the dot post group and be a member of this uh, community. When you are a member of the dot post group, you can immediately submit your request to the dot post secretariat. The dot post secretariat will verify quickly if you are eligible to apply uh, to, to get a domain or not and that to provide you uh, with some information how to submit your request formally. So usually to submit your request, you have to create a community ID, which is a part of the authentication process. Uh, we, can, we can facilitate the process by giving you the community ID credentials, or we can walk you through how to get your community ID. So the next step will be that once you're request is uh, submitted formally uh, at apply.info.post, we will again uh, go through an internal verification. So here there is a very important point that I want to, to indicate. You can choose uh, to register uh, a standard name such as any commercial name or a premium name. So we have two different types of domains, premium names or standard names. Premium names are uh, ISO code of your country or your country name. Standard name, as I said, it's what the, whatever commercial name that you would like uh, to register. So if you submit a request for premium name, there's one mandatory requirement that we need from you is that authorization of your government. Uh, you should provide us with an authorization from your government. The International Bureau dot post unit is responsible to send you the form to be filled in and signed by your government and returned to us. So once this, this is done, we can immediately go through the technical setup of your domain. So very easy and simple, just one requirement needed. However, for the standard name, it's also one requirement needed. It's not your government uh, authorization, but to get us an IPR document, which is intellectual uh, property rights or any trademark certificate. Again, we go through internal verification. It shouldn't take long time. And then we provide you with the uh, further steps to be followed. Please bear in mind that for standard names, uh, we have to go through a 30 day of public comment period to see that there is no, uh, no, uh, no, no, as no same names are competing with your request. So we have to go through this mandatory rule to public your uh, name for 30 day period of time. And when this uh, period is closed, we can go immediately with the technical setup. And one very important uh, information that if you are a dot post member, you can, um, your uh, domain registration is free. 
because it's offset against your uh, dot post contribution. So that is it uh, in short. This is how the registration process works. I would be very happy to, to answer any questions you may have. You could reach out to me by email if you would like to that I walk you smoothly and step-by-step step through the process. But uh, as I said, the process is not a complicated uh, uh, thing. It can be done easily and quickly. So that's it from my side regarding the dot post domain registrations. If you have uh, here in this slide, we see some important links you may be interested in uh, by looking at. So for you could visit the links provided on this slide to valid to to see some information on uh, the validation of your organization and to request your domain name so you should go register.post to to find more information about what i explained in short so now if there is no questions i will hand over to tracy and once again you could reach out to me anytime by email Thank you very much, Misam. There are actually two questions in the Q&A pod. Misam, the second one, I think you can take and you can probably um, put an answer to, maybe write an answer in the pod to that. Um, what is necessary to be part of the dot post community? Um, the first question I will probably try and answer. Um, how concretely, concretely you can protect your customer from hijacking and um, DDoS? Um, I think, as I said before, nothing is 100% effective. And besides the fact that, as I said, the, the top level domain is signed at the root um, DNSSEC and that we institute a series of policies, essentially the onus is upon the, the user, the, the customer, the business to implement a series of protections on their end, which we can help advise you on. So one of the things we can do um, we can't implement BGP and all the necessary aspects at your end because that's that's really on your side of the of the equation. But we can provide advice and guidance to you um, regarding how you may want to protect your particular internet presence um, at the at your level. Um, at the top level, domain level, we are limited to what we can do besides doing as much as we can um, to show that we are. Um, ourselves protected and, and eliminate spoofing as much as possible, um, eliminate DNS poisoning and, and pre prevent potential hijacking. But something like DDoS, as you know, is not something that a top level domain itself can prevent. Um, that's something that you have to do at your end to ensure you are protecting yourself. We believe that the compliance of our policies will assist you with regards to that. And by providing you with those policies, you should be able to go some of the way and preventing that from happening in your organization. However, you do need to take the necessary steps to prevent that from happening. D DDoS attacks are really, it, it's something that no one has solved, no one can prevent them. I mean, it can happen to you, but you can take steps to um, reduce the risk of it happening to you as much as possible. Again, that's very much at your end of the of the equation. Um, and there are several, as you know, several other players out there like Cloudflare and, and Dyne and so on who can, assist you with those as well in the market. Um, we can probably look at potential solutions for you at your end of the equation. Um, if you were to compare, for example, dot post with a, a country code top level domain, many of the top country code top level domains may not even be signed at, at the root. And furthermore, if they offer you second level domains, they may not be signed at the second level. So we just want to make sure you understand how that works. So, I'm, so I hope that fairly well answers the question. And um, as I said, we can, you know, contact us. Um, if you're a Dot Post Group member, you can reach out to us so we can provide that guidance and assistance to you. All right, so I've answered that question live. So I'm going to move on now and explain our other level of, of governance and compliance that we talked about. And I talk about that at the, at the basically at the bottom of that stack. Um, how do we ensure governance and compliance within a dot post uh, group. Well, 
we have a steering committee that was established um, at the very outset of the of this top level domain um, being delegated to the, the Universal Postal Union. And this steering committee, which um, rotates through election every four years, um, is currently made up of a, of a very diverse and highly experienced group of professionals who are essentially advising on how the dot post um, group shall function and the, the steps we shall take to ensure that there's good governance and even stricter security and compliance with the, the, um, the principles of the dot post top level domain and our overall framework. So as you can see, the chair of the dot post group is Massimiliano Aschi, he's from Italy, Post Italiani. He chairs and he's actually a senior cybersecurity expert who is uh, chairing the dot post group, our vice chair, Usama Rutubi. Um, you actually heard Usama earlier today asking a question. Um, he's a vice chair from La Post Tunisienne and he's director of digital transformation. So at the very leadership of the dot post group, we have two senior professionals in the postal sector who are guiding and assisting us with our work and ensuring that we are keeping to the highest standards of security, trust, and overall compliance. Also in the dot post group steering committee, um, Rui Fan from China Post, uh, Dr. Thomas Gaga from Ni Nigeria Postal Service, Helena Mati from Namibia Post, Isunte from Turkish Post, and Janice Gold Oluda from the US Postal Service. So quite a diverse group of, of, of individuals who are on our steering committee and providing us with that guidance and support as we implement our work plan and our dot post overall strategy, including our cybersecurity agenda. In terms of our current membership status, uh, we, we currently have 37 member countries from all over the world, um, Latin America and the Caribbean, the African region, um, from Europe, from the Americas, um, from Asia, quite a, quite a large spread of, of members. And we are currently have two private sector associate members. Um, you heard from Geomain and we currently have Stamstack who is graduating from our, um, our group uh, shortly. So we'd just like to recognize our members and, and thank them, some of whom are actually present today. And um, we do hope that we want to see some of you who are not currently members joining us going forward. So as I wrap up, um, I invite you to contact us. Our uh, catch-all email address is secretariat at info.post. And you can also learn more about what we do and what we offer at https um, colon backslash backslash info.post and an https register.post. So with that, I will have come to the end of my um, slide deck and I'm going to pause to see if there are any further questions um, for you and um, for me, sorry and also to ask if you are, um, I'm looking at the chat here to see some question, who signs on behalf of government? I'm not sure what's the, if that may be for Mesa, Mesa, there are a couple of questions there, maybe that you could look at in the chat, who signs on behalf of the government? And I'll give you an example. What is an example for the two domain names? I'm not sure, Jim, what you're asking there. Which which two domains you're referring to? I'm not sure if you mean for two or the two. Maybe you can type in the chat. Um, I think, uh, Tracy, if I may, I think Mr. Jim Mohezi is referring to the two types of domain names, the standard uh, and the premium. Yes, and he's asking actually in the Q&A. Um, Yes, basically asking if these are available. Yeah, so you, you can check the Q&A, maybe you can answer in the Q&A there. Okay. Yeah, the presentation will be shared as well. The video, this video will actually be, has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel and you can access it there as well. Mofat is asking to share the registration process and we will certainly do that. Um, so no problem. So we'll share everything that we have shared today with you. Um, Thank you for those questions and that feedback. 
Um, is there anything else in the Q&A pod? Let's have a look. Um, so we've answered nine questions. Um, I think we're okay. Now, are there any further questions? Um, let's confirm that our colleagues from Geomene are still here. Yes, they're still yes, here. Yes, I am. And we've answered the questions in the pod. And right. if anybody has further questions, they are welcome to email me on sol at geomain.com. All right. Thank so, you. Lyrico, you, are, you still have your hand up. I'm not sure if you are hearing us. But if you are, you can go ahead and try and ask your question now. If not, you can type it in the chat. This is the question I think pending from before. Um, Chief Moyo, is this an old hand or a new hand? Uh, I'm asking. Uh, it's, it's a new hand. It's a new okay. hand, uh, Tracy. Proceed. Yes, go ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Tracy. I just want to uh, make uh, my closing. Uh, remarks with regards to the presentation by uh, Geomain. Uh, I would want to urge uh, Geomain to uh, continue their discussions with uh, the post from uh, uh, Miku East. Um, I, I would want to see a, a solution which I would uh, think is suitable for 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 countries like Africa, a solution that links uh, uh, GPS to the physical address. Why um, the post in Africa plays a, a, a bigger role than just uh, e-commerce uh, deliveries? Uh, addresses in uh, in Africa it help also to link uh, the emergency services with the people. Emergency services like uh, the fire uh, fighters, like your ambulance services, and also the uh, housing and planning departments also rely on the physical address. And it will be very good if we can have a, a hybrid solution, which also enables uh, the digital side to interact effectively with the physical side so that uh, uh, there is no loss of uh, relevance. You know, in Africa, we also encounter uh, disasters and people have to be uh, rescued if they are cyclones. And that calls for uh, knowledge of uh, the physical location of a place. And uh, if it's complemented by the GPS uh, addressing, then uh, that will be handy. Then I would want to end by uh, also uh, restating that uh, as the Pan-African Poster Union, we look forward to uh, discussions with uh, Geomain so that we can also have our inputs as they uh, shape and package their solution uh, for our members. And uh, I hope to get in touch uh, uh, with my friend uh, off, offline. And uh, then I would want to end by thanking uh, you, Tracy, and your team for the uh, dot post uh, presentations. And uh, for you, uh, I can call you anytime. So uh, even if I don't have issues now, I can raise them with you any other time on any other platform. Thank you very much. I see the floor back to you. Sorry, I was muted. Maybe Chief, thank you very much. Um, I'd appreciate if you can um, also indicate what you indicate to me, a plug for dot .post. Um, perhaps you could encourage your your member colleagues from um, the African Posts to, to, you know, yeah. to reach out to us. And let me, let me turn it back over to you to, you know, you, you say it so eloquently, so let me allow you to say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thank you very much. Let me do some bit of uh, marketing for you. Uh, but in fact, it's not really marketing. I have been working very closely with uh, uh, Dot Post, and I was very instrumental in the Zimpost Zimbabwe Mall uh, Dot Post project from its initial stage to its uh, launch. And uh, uh, I was fortunate to uh, take the Dot Post to one of our uh, uh, trade shows where we were showcasing it. And uh, 
a, a hacker came through and said, guys, bring, let me test how secure your system is. After five, 10 minutes, he came back and said, yeah, guys, this thing is very secure. It cannot be, uh, uh, we, we cannot hack into it. And to me, that is a very big plus, especially if you are looking at uh, getting into the e-commerce uh, online uh, shopping uh, business where security of uh, information uh, of customers as well as financial information of the organization are concerned. And uh, the dot post provides that kind of solution. And most importantly, it's a, it's a user uh, driven organization which speaks specifically to the needs of the postal fraternity. It helps uh, postal entities, especially those that are financially challenged to have their own systems developed from scratch. It helps us to pull our resources together so that uh, uh, the membership fees can take care of uh, all the uh, associated costs which could ordinarily uh, come to uh, one country or one organization. So we should take advantage of this. And I'm looking forward to having more members uh, from Africa and beyond joining so that we can help even lower the cost of uh, uh, membership, hopefully. And uh, that way, uh, as a postal fraternity, as a postal family, as a postal community, we can uh, steer this uh, in the direction we want in response to uh, changes, technological changes around us. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think uh, I've, I've done justice to the few minutes you have given me. I cede the floor back to you, Tracy. Thank you very much, Chief Moyo Hired. <laughs> thank you very much for your excellent um, um, testimony for us, and we really do appreciate it. And you're a friend of that post, and we, we certainly um, want to encourage everyone to listen to the words of the Chief. Um, the SG of, of Papu um, and his experiences with Zimbabwe and to, to ensure that we, we, we're not just here doing slides and talking to you about stuff. We actually are doing what we say we are doing. We're doing it and we're doing it well. And we're trying to improve and do even more. We're here to serve you and we certainly want to ensure that you on this journey, uh, you know, move through that journey safely and securely. We, 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 that's all we're trying to do. We're trying to help you on this journey. Um, along with our partners like um, Geomain and other even other posts who are working with us, like, for example, Zimpost and others, we do want to ensure that once we um, are saying what we're saying, we can also help you, just by mentioning what the best practice, center of excellence, and so on. So we think there should not be people just doing things in silos. Let's work together. As the chief said, it's sort of a shared burden. It's a shared journey. And by sharing the, the, the work and the, the labor across all of the, um, the African continent and, and the region, we believe that we can work together and make our African Post a leading postal sector in the world um, by doing this digital journey properly, safely, and securely, and by taking the, you know, the next step forward and demonstrating to the rest of the world um, how this can be done, how you can be you know, profitable going forward in the next phase of this digital economy that is right here and facing us. So with that I'd like to, um, I don't think there are any further questions. Uh, let me see. The record's this hand is still up, so I'm assuming that um, is no longer listening or not here uh, or can't unmute, but if not, you could um, again put it in the chat and we try and answer it separately. Um, a, a comment in the chat, we have trusted and agreed on technology that that pose an offering, especially in security issues, but I'm much interested to see what that post is covered, a link or facility that we can facilitate payment solutions to member countries that are on that post. The payment solution that is globally accepted to facilitate instant payment to people who are enjoying the services offered through post office, especially online purchase. This is Mr. Kasese Kass, Kass, from Tanzania Post. We thank you for your comments, and, and we certainly would like to continue exploring these issues with you, as I mentioned. Um, just going back to my slide on the shared services platform, I'm just quickly go back just to show you what we are trying to do. So this area here in this light blue 
and what we're working on together and we do ensure want to ensure that we will be deploying these types of shared services including what you're asking for uh, whether in, with our partners or whether that could, within the UPU infrastructure UPU portfolio that services can be offered um, that can meet your needs so rest assured that is all being discussed and worked on um, just allow us to to move through this process and to get it done so we do it well and, and securely and um, I, I'm, I'm very certain that within the next 12 months we'll be able to come back to you and speak more specifically about not just having it done but having use cases to demonstrate to other posts that we have done what we said we were going to do so I, I'm really, really confident that will happen in the next 12 months. So thank you very much. And um, if there are no further questions or comments in the chat, I'm not seeing any, I will hand back to Amadou um, to give us some closing statements. Amadou. Okay, thank you, Tracy. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't have uh, anything more to say uh, than to encourage our members uh, to register to, to post a domain because currently, they saw the figure. The figure are showing that uh, only 19 African countries uh, are registered. So it will be good to, uh, by the end of 2023 to double or maybe to have uh, more uh, registered uh, countries. Indeed, we will continue this uh, kind of uh, webinars either on country request or. Uh, Tracy and Sabra request uh, we are available for 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 that, and uh, we, I would like I would like to thank our members uh, who participate uh, to this webinar. Twenty five countries, three restricted unions. Uh, I would like special to thank uh, uh, Tracy Sabra for your time. Uh, I wish you to all a very nice day, hoping that uh, we will have uh, very soon another uh, edition of uh, this uh, webinar series. Thank you very much. Thank you all and Thank you. enjoy Thank the rest you. of your day. Yes. Bye Thank all. You. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Thanks for your time. I think we can stop the recording now, tech team. Thank you very much.